A steam plant using a castle steam boiler part 11. How to make a handle for the hand pump. The job starts by finding out how wide the original pump handle is. I did this by using a micrometer. Then I went over to my drill set and found a drill bit that was the same diameter as the handle. This is the drill I'm going to use to make a hole in a piece of brass. I sent to drill the piece of brass first and here I'm drilling the hole. It doesn't have to be brass, you could make it from phosphor bronze, but brass is perfectly okay for this. As you can clearly see from this clip, the handle is a very good fit in the hole in the brass bar. It doesn't want to be too tight and it doesn't want to be too slack. At this point, I could insert a girlfriend joke, but I won't because I've used this line before. What is very important when drilling this hole is that I don't drill it too deep, because the handle has to be a good fit and must not touch the crossbar. Once the hole was drilled to the correct depth in the piece of bar, it's now time to turn down the outside to make a stylish pump handle. If you're following these directions and you can't be bothered turning down the outside diameter, you could part off the piece of brass bar and call that your pump handle. Alternatively, you could just find a piece of tube and hammer one end of it flat to fit over the handle. It's all down to your own personal taste. If you're happy with a hammer and file approach to engineering, then good. If you like to do things so they look better, do it this way. I'm using a round nose turning tool. And initially, I'm turning the part of this bar that fits over the handle of the pump down to a size that looks good relative to the pump and isn't massively too big and clumsy and looks really horrible. Which reminds me of a girlfriend that I used to have. I'm going to reduce the centre part of the handle, but I need to know when to start doing that. If I reduce the diameter of the piece of bar too soon, then disaster will strike. All I did was fit the pump into the hole in the handle, take a note of how far down the pump went into the hole, and by holding the flat part of the pump handle against the outside of the bar, I could clearly see the point where I could safely reduce the diameter of the bar for the centre part of the handle. This clip shows the depth of cut that I'm taking with the round nose tool to reduce the handle's diameter. What I need to do now is pull the piece of bar out of the chuck a bit further. And now it's not running quite so true, but it doesn't matter because I have quite a lot more turning to do yet. And I may even pull the part out of the chuck a bit further. I can't give any dimensions for this handle. If it looks right, it is right. If the hand pump was in a confined space on the steam plant, it would probably be a good idea to make the handle longer, but really you have to look at the steam plant and see what the handle is going to look like against it. It doesn't really matter because when you're displaying the steam plant, say in a glass case, you could remove the handle from the pump. What I'm doing at the moment is taking a fine cut from the bottom part of the pump handle, and once the cutting tool gets to the right place, I wind it in quickly, now I'm turning the thinner part of the handle the centre part. By doing it this way you create a continuous curve on the lower part of the handle but I don't want the continuous curve to continue on the upper part of the handle. I will leave the end part at the same angle as the cutting tool. In this clip I'm reducing the diameter of the end part of the handle which needs to be turned to a lesser diameter than the other end. Leaving the handle with an equal diameter at the top and bottom would make it look clumsy. Something worth mentioning. The other day I made a video about some knurling tools that I have. And as all my knurling tools were right in front of me on the shelf, I was very tempted to knurl the handle. But that wouldn't be a good idea. When running a steam plant with just a hand pump to supply the water, there's quite a lot of to and fro action using the pump. If the end of it was knurled, over a period of time it would make your fingers sore. And for that reason I'm going to make my pump handle very smooth and shiny. I start off with some emery cloth like this, soon followed by a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, not shown here. I'm not happy with the finish at the bottom part of the pump, mainly because it worked loose in the centre and it chattered a bit. But after this final cut, the job's finished. Did I say finished? Well, almost. The next job is to part off the component. I also removed the life centre from the other end, 
so that the finished part is free to fall into the chip tray. This clip shows the pump handle fitted in the chuck the other way around. I need a nice finish on the end of the pump handle. First of all I use a chamfering tool followed by refitting the round nose tool in the tool post and taking a nice cut to round the end of the pump handle. After this last turning job I remove the part from the chuck and use my polishing spindle to clean up the tool marks. And the final polishing of the handle took place using a piece of Brasso wadding. As far as I can remember when I was a kid this stuff was called Duraglit but now it's called Brasso wadding. And after a bit of elbow grease with the Brasso wadding and a cloth the pump handle looks like this now. With a bit more rubbing with the Brasso wadding and a cloth I could get it even more shiny but I think it will be okay like this. So there you have it, a water pump handle very easy and very quick to make. And that's it for this video, I'd just like to say stay safe and well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back